We welcome you returning on our channel. Jesus Christ has long discussed a moment, not too far off when a man known as the Antichrist would ascend to prominence and attract adherents from all around. For a long while, this has been a major issue of worry for Christians. But what if I told you that the Antichrist is already here and related to the Kaaba in Mecca specifically? Though the Bible wouldn't make up something like this, it would sound startling and difficult to believe. Watch the entire movie. I will expose a startling fact regarding who might really be within the Kaaba. Like clockwork, Muslims from all around the world head toward Mecca five times a day every day to worship. Mecca, the birthplace of the Prophet Muhammad, is quite dear to them. Still, they are not really facing Mecca itself when they travel there. They are confronting the Kaaba, a special construction. This Kaaba is not just ordinary construction project. This is a mosque of great significance and symbolism. Now let us discuss a secret within the Kaaba where things truly become fascinating. Within one corner of this holy site sits a unique stone known as the Black Stone. Long ago, people have pondered about this stone. From what may it be? Though many ideas exist, the reality remains a mystery. Tucked inside the hallowed Kaaba grounds is a secret reality, failed from most's point of view, but known to a small number. And whose key unlocks this mystery? Apart from the smart and all-knowing Jesus personally, slipped behind this cherished framework, he is the guardian of the mystery ready to reveal its secrets to those who yearn for knowledge. Let us travel throughout the disclosures of Jesus presented in a nice and engaging manner. He starts by clarifying the mysterious being sometimes known as the Beast of Revelation. Names like Baal Biel, the Lord of the Earth, the Evil One, the Man of Lawlessness, and the Prince of Demons speak especially to those of us versed with the lessons of the Bible. Surprisingly, though, Jesus presents a fact that would contradict accepted wisdom. Some people view Allah, as mentioned in the Quran, as limited mind inside the black stone of the Kaaba. Indeed, such discoveries call on us to investigate the complex interaction across religions, even if they sound shocking. Still, the revelations keep revealing. Jesus reveals furthermore on the cosmic struggle between good and evil in his soft and calming way. He reveals the part a false prophet, none other than Muhammad himself, plays in this great story. Jesus' teachings hold that Muhammad will create an image for the beast, as described in Revelation 13.14. Designed to fool the people living on earth, this image will inspire devotion of it in respect to the beast who miraculously survived a sword wound. Let us approach these great truths with an open heart and a curious attitude as we travel through them. Every discovery compels us to consider the nature of religion, the power of prophecy, and the ceaseless conflict between light and darkness, and among all of it. Jesus is a lighthouse of direction, lending to those who ask knowledge and understanding. You could be wondering what relevance this weapon has. Prepare yourself. It is none other than the sharp sword described in Revelation 1915-16 emanating from the lips of Jesus Christ himself. And now comes still another nugget of truth. Jesus still has to finish exposing the secrets. In Revelation 17, 8, Jesus reveals that the once existing beast is meant for ultimate destruction. It vanished, then vanished, but will eventually resurface. Imagine the shock of people whose names are not recorded in the Book of Life. When they saw this beast resurrected, let us clear a common misunderstanding. Islamic history holds that the black stone came from heaven. Still, the truth is somewhat different. Actually banished from heaven, the beast of Revelation was Baal. And where is his confinement right now? You guessed it, there within that same black stone. The prophet Isaiah claimed that none else than Baal himself was dropped down to the abyss the Lion of Babylon. But not to worry, friends, Jesus, the ultimate winner, assures us of his supremacy. And here the storyline gets more complex. Jesus reveals the fate of the false prophet Muhammad and the beast spirit he champions in Revelation 19.20. Both are to be caught and thrown live into the flaming lake of burning Suri. This interesting passage comes from the Apostle Paul and two Thessalonians. Right now the power of the Holy Spirit keeps the beast also known as the man of lawfulness, backward. But need to worry. One day the lawless one will be revealed, only to be overwhelmed by the breath of Jesus' mouth and violated by his presence. Let us thus consider this now. 
Mecca contains this stone from which all Islamic prayers from around the world have to be focused. But did you know that old pagan temples also had prayers aimed toward this precise location? And here is when it becomes interesting. Jesus has revealed what happens when a law loses its confinement inside the stone. Grace yourselves since, when the Holy Spirit withdraws, what remains on earth is unclean spirits and their leader. The beast of revelation, the man of lawlessness, the mighty ancient ball of Babylon, also known as a law in the Quran. And let me say, when the Son of Man returns triumphantly, there will be much regret. It's a reality that calls for our attention, just as Jesus personally announced in Revelation chapter 1, 7. In one of his perceptive parables, Jesus vividly contrasts the kingdom of heaven with a field, where good seed is sowed only to have an enemy slip in and spread weeds among the wheat. Now the disciples were a little confused by this analogy, thus Jesus gently explained the meaning for them. While the weeds stand for those who belong to the wicked one, cleverly sowed by none other than the devil itself, the good seed stands for the moral people of the kingdom. My friends, a harvest marks the end of the era and is the angels who will supervise this great work. They will gather the weeds and bundle them for burning while the wheat will be securely collected into the barn. A. Wait, there's more here. Jesus then reveals more profound facts, so it is imperative to pay great attention since things are about to turn quite frightening. This spirit wants to discredit Jesus Christ's redemptive sacrifice and clashes with him. And who reflects this sinister attitude? Only Allah from the Quran. Let beloved friends not cause you heart problems. For Jesus gives to us the consoling certainty that the angelic hosts will perform the honorable work of separating the virtuous from the unrighteous in the great fabric of divine providence. Those judged as the virtuous will find themselves racing within the sacred residence of their heavenly Father's kingdom, where perpetual beauty awaits like brilliant sunbeams. On the other hand, the unrighteous, shown in this allegory as the weeds, will meet their fate in the blazing furnace of judgment, where grief will accompany the teeth's grinding and atonement. Turning our attention to the gripping story revealed in Revelation chapter 13, we come across the representation of two very strong entities of great importance. While the second beast represents the false prophet, destined to come to power alongside the Antichrist, the first beast, an emblem of the Antichrist, captures the very core of hostility to the reign of Christ. Together they create a powerful triad directed by Satan himself, matched with the forces of darkness with the terrible goal of seducing and catching humanity under their control. The subtle connotation buried inside the word anti in Greek origin fascinates the imagination since it goes beyond simple resistance to Christ. Instead, it communicates the idea of substitution or replacement. Thus, when the Antichrist shows out on the world scene, he deftly refrains from publicly expressing hate towards Christ, the mask of a messianic figure, a supposed rescuer, waited eagerly by many. Through skillful manipulation of rhetoric, he attempts to captivate the hearts and minds of a diverse array of religious followers. Deceptively posing as the long-awaited Savior, take heart for God has assured us that what he has sealed will indeed be eradicated from the earth when the Lord himself descends from heaven, manifesting extraordinary power and majesty. This significant event will be heralded by a resounding command, the majestic voice of an archangel and the triumphant trumpet call of God. First, the departed believers in Christ will rise from there, followed by those still living who will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. From that blessed moment onward, they will forever be in the Lord's presence. Contrary to certain fictional narratives, it is crucial to understand that there will be no second chance for salvation for those left behind on earth. Jesus himself explicitly states in Revelation that none among those who remain will find their name inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. But now, my dear listeners, prepare yourselves for the riveting climax, for the final revelation is about to unfold before our very eyes. This truth resonates powerfully throughout the pages of Revelation, notably in passages like chapter 13, 8, and chapter 17, 8 where Jesus reveals a sobering reality. All the inhabitants of the earth, save those whose names are inscribed in the book of life, will be drawn into the worship of the beast. 
This prophecy is echoed in 1, 78, underlining the profound astonishment of those whose names are absent from the Book of Life when they witness the reappearance of the beast. In essence, Jesus emphasizes that salvation hinges solely upon the atoning sacrifice he offered. Any belief system or spiritual ideology that denies or distorts this fundamental truth seeks to undermine the very essence of Christ's redemptive work. Take, for instance, the Quran, which presents a narrative that denies the atoning sacrifice of Jesus by renaming him, Isa, and propagating falsehoods about his mission. In stark contrast, the Bible unequivocally affirms that Jesus is the Son of God, the mediator, the bearer of burdens, the incarnate Word of God, the crucified Savior, and the victorious, resurrected Lord. Moreover, the fulfillment of 351 Old Testament prophecies by Jesus serves as a profound testament to the divine orchestration of his mission. This remarkable alignment, spanning centuries of prophetic utterances, underscores the undeniable truth of Jesus' divine nature and the legitimacy of his purpose. It is imperative that we discern the glaring disparity between the authentic Jesus depicted in the Bible, who extends boundless love and offers salvation to all who believe and any belief system that seeks to diminish or distort the unparalleled significance of his sacrificial offering. When you cast your gaze upon the iconic dome of the rock in Jerusalem, its majestic golden dome and shimmering blue walls captivate the skyline, serving as a visual testament to the revered night journey of Muhammad into the heavens. Yet hidden within its grandeur lies a darker truth. Etched within the walls of this structure is a founding inscription in Arabic, delivering a pointed message to the people of the book, cautioning against overstepping religious boundaries and admonishing the belief in the divinity of Jesus Christ. Instead, it asserts the sole unity of God and denies the concept of the Holy Trinity, portraying Jesus as merely an apostle and a spirit from God. Such deliberate denigration of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Trinity is reminiscent of the tactics employed by malevolent forces. This inscription, crafted to undermine the core tenets of Christianity, bears the hallmarks of the beast described in Matthew 24. 1. As Jesus prophesied to his disciples, Not one stone of the temple shall remain unturned, signifying the impending destruction of all that opposes the true faith. The return of Jesus is imminent, and upon his arrival, he will undoubtedly cast judgment upon false prophets and disciples who have sought to mock and defile the sanctity of the Holy Trinity. The reckoning foretold in Scripture awaits, and those who have distorted the truth shall face divine retribution in the face of deception, and mockery aimed at undermining the divinity of Jesus Christ and the truth of the Holy Trinity. It is imperative that we stand firm in our faith despite the challenges and tribulations that may arise. Let us not be swayed by the cunning schemes of the adversary. Instead, let us place our trust wholeheartedly in Jesus Christ, the Savior, who will soon return to vanquish all falsehood and establish His eternal reign of righteousness. Though the world may tremble and uncertainties abound, take courage and do not be afraid, for in Jesus we find solace, strength, and unwavering hope. He is the cornerstone of our faith, the beacon of light guiding us through the darkness. As we await His glorious return, let us hold fast to His promises and continue to proclaim His truth with boldness and conviction. Therefore I urge you, my dear friends, to place your trust in Jesus Christ and stand steadfast in the face of adversity. Let us not be shaken by the schemes of the enemy, but remain anchored in the unshakable love and grace of our Lord, for in Him alone do we find true peace and everlasting salvation. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos.